Hey LGMs and welcome to another episode of Table Talk, R&D for Greater RP. Today's topic is alignment. When to use it? How much does it matter? Does it matter all the time? Does it matter to everyone? Let's talk about it. So you were saying your thoughts on alignment are? Well, I mean, I'm speaking mostly within the context uh, of D&D, although not exclusively um, for, for part of it, um, that, that alignment matters. That is it, it's something that should be considered uh, in front of the game. And uh, a lot of people are way too eager to, to overlook it. Um, it. It's one of those topics that, that's been around since the very start of gaming and always been debated. Um, I think a lot of people find it an inconvenient rule um, and uh, you know, kind of like the easy to overlook except for those rare instances where it matters. Um, but I think it should be um, considered more often than that. Do you find that, do you think alignment is relative? Do you think uh, somebody who is chaotic evil can occasionally do a good thing? And do you think, a lof, lof, say, a lawful good character is capable of doing his well, alignment? And I'm not talking uh, like every day, but... Uh, okay, that's a good question. Um, not looking at it yet at a standpoint of personal morality for the character, um, my first thoughts are in game mechanics. Um, for instance, in, in the very early versions of, of D&D, um, you had one of the more powerful characters of uh, classes was the paladin. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they had a mess uh, power. The advantage is that, they, that the fighter didn't have and that the cleric didn't have. But the requirement was they had to be lawful good. And I think that kind of helped balance the game. If you wanted to play a character with those extra abilities, you had to be willing to play that alignment. And sometimes that meant being you know, a kill to the party or sometimes being the person who runs into danger in the party. It could be an inconvenience that everyone had to deal with, and I think that was a big part of um, enjoying the role play of it, and being seen as an inconvenience for most opportunity to really dig into the character role play. So the trade-off with the extra powers was this kind of, this, for lack of a better term, a disadvantage. Um, Here, here's, I'm glad you brought up Paladins. Here's the example that I usually use when people suggest that, you know, people use the paladin as an alignment um, uh, pillar. Say paladin A is adventuring, oh, I don't know, let's say by himself, because he's um, complicated, to not complicate the example, let's say that he's questing by himself for some holy MacGuffin. Um, And he's riding, and he's a great and powerful knight, and he comes upon this village that is filled with wonderfully happy people. There's no disease. There's no illness. Everybody's happy. Everyone's clean. It's a happy, happy, wonderful place. And he's so in awe by this that he deliberately decides to stop and go, like, to the local church and say thanks. And when he gets there, he finds that the entire town, and is not attempting to hide this, worships Orcus. Okay. For some unknown reason, to the play PC at this moment, Orcus has gone out of his way to make all these people incredibly happy. He's a devil, who knows? Um, or a demon, I think. He's a demon, who knows? So Pal- Paladin A now is absolutely aware that worshipping people, does he kill them? If he worships okay. a god that particularly hates Orcus, does he have a choice? See, now, the problem I have with that is, um, this is the case now of Orcus kind of violating alignment. I mean, Orcus is very clearly a chaotic, evil, demon lord. Definitely. The scenario described just simply wouldn't happen. Now, let's say you're in a bizarre universe, and this did, and, and this does happen. Let me think for a moment. Um, because it, I know, it's, I really don't, it's, it's, a, it's a realistic scenario, a reasonable scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's say that the, Okay, if the divine creature, God, whatever, that the paladin um, is sworn to mm-hmm. is that against the cult of Orcus, um, then, uh, yeah, you know, they probably will um, try to lay waste to the town. And, and how you've got a real-life example just in history. I mean, you've got, you know, um, across, say, across Spain or the Holy Land, Mm. Um, Muslims, you know, advancing science and medicine and 
living in peace, and uh oh, here come the knights from Europe, you know, destroying things, you know. Let's say in this tra- in this example I made up that Orcus was under the belief that the happier the soul when he ate it, the better it would energize him. You know, it is very possible then that that Calvin could use that rationale to say, "Well, I am hurting Orcus all the more by you know." But if the people on don't people. know, well, so the... I'm just you know stopping this uh, to what this Calvin would consider an, an abomination. So I think that. And in, in, you know, in this case, really, it's the DM that has to decide. And I think in this case, the DM um, is setting up the paladin for, you know, to have to make this kind of choice. And, uh, you know, I, you know the really kind of Oh, I would never do a player. Oh. I never have, and I probably never will. It's just yeah, the example I, that I use to try and to to pitch to other DMs to try and figure out how they feel about the concept of of relative morality. Can Superman kill someone even once and maintain his lawful good alignment? Can Lex Luthor, who is absolutely in it for himself all the time, can Lex can Lex really do a selfless charitable donation somewhere that he really isn't getting anything out of? Say he goes under a false name, so he doesn't even get the credit. But, can can he do that um, without shifting closer to being a more traditional good guy? Yeah, again, you're putting up these kind of um, situations which are highly unlikely to happen. Oh, totally, um, totally. These aren't everyday so situations. I I but, just for well, I, I always looked at alignment as. Just, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just, just saying that, that 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 these kind of scenarios make it more difficult to um, to. Kind of continue to talk about alignment because, you know, really, I mean, in the game with imagination, if you can imagine it, you know, you can present it. Right. Um, so, I don't know, I, my, my answer to Les Luthor is that he wouldn't do a charitable thing out of pure selflessness. He would always have some kind some of. Some ulterior uh, motive. You're probably yeah, right. But this is because he's a fictional character. I mean, he's kind of got some. He's more than just a one-dimensional character these days, mm. uh, but I think any writer worth their salt is going to show. You no, know, this is Luthor. He doesn't really change. But the um, the other so example, well, Superman well, has killed did, people. You know, it will be a major part of the story. So, oh know. yeah, but yeah. Like, you know, but, you know, not, but you know, it's not just the paladin. I mean, the cleric too mm. just has to follow alignment rules, and in the mechanics of the early game. Um, you know, if you stray from the alignment, it didn't necessarily have to be lawful good. I think you could have, you know, a chaotic good uh, cleric, neutral good cleric, depending on which divinity um, you're aligned with. Yeah, gods let um, you change they, quite a bit. Yeah. If they stray from the alignment too much for the DM, the DM could decide, hey, this person's spells are divinely supplied. They might not always work. They may not always work for effectiveness. Right. Um, I guess what I'm asking is some of the characters that that you know has a brings a lot of power to the game. I mean, they've got good fighting ability and they've got strong support. Now, so it, so there's a real consequence to gameplay and game balance. You now, if the cloud starts going off the rails. Oh yeah, I, I realize that all those ex- encounters I throw out are very extreme, and no encounter happens in a vacuum. I I, I just. For me, alignment is... No one is just lawful good or just chaotic evil. Everyone is, is a yeah. little bit of everything. Well, Lex, so we are dealing with a fictional world, you know. Right, and right. And it's a game to have a set of somewhat consistent rules in order for us to be able to suspend the disbelief and to make it work. Uh, if everyone kind of approaches the world with an almost anything goes attitude, the game really does fall apart kind of quickly. Oh, I don't, I'm not um, suggesting that, that you just kind of do whatever you want with alignment. I, I, I'm suggesting that alignment doesn't have to be cold and iron all the time. Superman has killed people, but we still call him a good guy. Because more often than not, 98% of the time, he's saving a bunch of people at a time. Well, this is part of why later editions of the game and many other role-playing games um, don't stress alignment as much. And that kind of brings me to my second point of why alignment matters. Sure, let's hear it. Change the word alignment for reputation. Say that again, I'm sorry. 
Exchange the word alignment for reputation. Okay. Your, your alignment again? is the way that alignment kind of defines the way you interact with the world, um, whether it be a fantasy setting in D and D or a science fiction setting setting in a Traveler or um, um, Starfinder. Um, it it kind of helps to define your character's place in that universe. Now it, it's not set in stone, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, that can shift. Um, you know, if you're a city got a good fighter or something, but you find yourself not doing something positive because the law says you can't and you don't want to suffer the consequences from that, well, then maybe there's a little shift there. It doesn't really affect the gameplay too much. Even paladins and clerks tend to have a lot more loose relationship with the alignment these days, officially. There's really nothing in the fifth edition rules, for instance, that covers alignment in a mechanics sense. It's more of a I like the idea that alignment equi- equates to your how you interact with the world and how the interact the world interacts with you. Um, yeah. Something you brought so, up so earlier. I'm just saying, if you have a character who is known to be lawful good, that person is going to be say trusted by the local constabulary, or is going to be the kind of person that the king or queen is going to want to hire to do a mission, you know, for them. If your character has a more character reputation. You know, Robin Hood or something, then you know that the people are going to refer to this person as their local folk hero. Um, right. Trust him, but Robin Hood was is, definitely chaotic good. His actions disagreed yeah. with the laws at the time, but the laws yeah. at the time were wrong. Yeah. No, I use the temperature for, for that. Uh, if, likewise, though, if you've got another hobo in your party, okay, who, you know, on the character sheet says, oh, I'm neutral, but killing everything in sight. He, he's clearly yeah, not, I'm right. Down merchants and then burning down, you know, the tavern and stuff like that. Well, you know, the people are going to respond to that person differently. And the DM has to decide, you know, what are the consequences of this. Now, for, say, a rogue or a fighter, there may not be a whole lot of consequences mechanic-wise, but if you've got, you know, a paladin or a, say, a warlock is attached to a certain type of, uh, um, What's the term? Uh, a certain type of patron, um, or you know, with a divinity touch, maybe spells stop working, or in the case of a non-magical, you know, like a like a like a, like a fighter or something like that, if they start acting like this, well, you know, maybe you know the local government will stop cooperating, or they'll find themselves turned away from villages. Right. And uh, and these are effects of alignment. I mean, and you know, then you can have, you know. I'm going to make sure good and goes, yeah, but Bill, you get killed all the younglings. I mean, come on. So, something you said earlier um, that I wanted to go back to. When I presented a couple of the, the Paladin example, and, and you said that that would be a, a moment where the GM is setting up the player, absolutely. Um, if I, I've, I'm not really sure alignment, alignment's just a word written on your character sheet. I, I don't think it matters. Unless you're having, and I think it's just a standing thing. I think the moments where players where players use their care player characters, a moment of stress to decide whether or not they really are going to go all the way with their alignment or not, is when okay, alignment no, really that's, shines. That's that, okay, come on, that, that's their red line self descriptor and how they decide their actions. You mean right? If if a paladin is in has an opportunity to to strike down. A, a a a worshiper of someone, uh, a worshiper of a god that he is, per- he should totally do that. But if that person is unconscious and tied to a post, and his god opposes beating up the defenseless, can he kill that guy? Should he kill that guy? Ultimately, I I don't know. It would very much depend on the individual paladin and their individual god and the individual god of the guy who the, he's a be he he's about to slay or not slay who they worship. Like I said, no encounter yeah, happens in a vacuum. There is a the divinity who for whom, for example, you know, you know killing a helpless person uh, being an anathema. Uh, I forget which one it is. And in that case, I would come say if that person's abilities were tied to their alignment and to their relationship with that divinity then there should be consequences, such as some, maybe that person losing some of those abilities. I, I don't think I'd go as far as some of the early uh, DMs and such would have in um, K-12, 
taking away experience points or levels. You know, yeah, I was never for that. It was more like... advantages until that character had deemed themselves or shifted back to the alignment that they started out with. Right. I, when I run a character sheet, I, I have a very homebrewed version of D&D, and when I have a, a character sheet for it, um, uh, you get a little number track on the bottom of the card, right, with a zero and then one up to six, and then neg- negative one down to negative six, and, and everyone starts at zero, and if you do a, a, a truly selfless thing, you go up a bump, and if you do a truly selfish thing, you go down a bump. But there's... I'm for, for, for good characters. Good oh, no, this characters. is for everybody. Um, if if okay. you do... A, every character starts at zero unless you're a, a... Unless your character class, there's the assumption that your paladins are obviously one bump bump than everyone else. Clerics are yeah, two. would no, be a bump or two below. Right, right. And now if you do... This is, does happen every time you do a selfish thing. Hannibal Lecter eats people. It's part of his everyday behavior. So I wouldn't give... Is it creepy? You bet. Would I give him a ne- another negative bump every time he did it again? No. It's a, it's a normal part of his behavior. So in order... It's in, almost an expectation. So he would have to go out of his way to be creepier than that for me to give him another negative. Just yeah, like... I would the, be surprised if there's a game system out there somewhere that does something similar to that. Uh, it's not a bad idea. Thank you. I, I Don't get me wrong. I love the, the pl- armor-plated champion of light, right? His armor gleams in the sun. And not because he shined it, just because the gods do that for him, right? Reality loves him. Oh. And yeah, the- yeah. No, my favorite cleric is a Tempest cleric. And I imagine the Vincent of DM that, you know, in certain moods, he gets like St. Elmo's fire, a little lightning crackles and such a flavor. <laughs> just- love it. A- um, but I um, think I, that... I, one, oh. one final point on alignment. Please go ahead. One, the third spoke my well. I mean, at first, I mean, my first point was, especially in the early days, that alignment was um, in mechanic that that that, that um, affected game balance. And my second point, later games, that alignment is more like reputation. It defines how the world, including the various divine patrons, interact with you. The third one is alignment really is a part of your character self and you kind of have an obligation to role play that um, oh definitely I, yeah I mean there's this kind of there's this attitude which has kind of blown over the years that you know you can't constrain me and you know morality is great and you know it's a you know, you know I, I don't want to be defined by an alignment sort of thing and I kind of reject this argument a bit because fine in the real world, but, you know, you agreed to try and role-play this character. Now, you, you, Fred, are not a, you know, six-level, level, um, rogue, you know. Right, right. So, you, you're not you. You're role-playing as di- a different character right. in a different place. Well, you're playing a character, so, uh, so the challenge to you, and what I think makes the game, not just you but all role-playing games, a lot of fun is being able to fit yourself into that role. It's being an actor. Oh yeah, I'm a. Thank you for that. I'm a oh, huge well, defender that. That great Nazi hunt. Uh, there's that great Jew hunt and Nazi in the Tarantino films. But I don't for a moment think that he's a bad guy. I just think he's a great actor. Right, right. I, I think that the, the tabletop. I think there's another conversation we should totally have. But I think um, the that one of the greatest. Probably the greatest for me, the, the biggest, most important pillar at, at, the, at the tabletop isn't the dice or the stats or really anything on the character card at all. It's your ability to act and perform and create this almost thespian experience for you and your friends. Uh, yeah, that means accepting a, 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 a built-in limitation. If you're the one who built it in by filling in LG, CG, CE, whatever in the right, right. alignment circle. Oh, yeah. We have we have passed the fifteen minute marker. I would love to have this conversation again at some point. This has been great. Sure, we can have this conversation again, or any other topics. I look forward to uh, doing some more with you. It was great talking to you, and uh, um, we'll be in touch. Sounds good. I'll talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye. Right, have- and there you have it. Alignment. Do you use it for everyone, every time, or do you use it for more specific things like paladins, clerics, and maybe not the fighter? I don't know. It's your game. Later days.